Hello and welcome to What's on the Shelf. I'm your host Jen and today we are Wednesday. It is unboxing. Uh, we've got some new music going on in the background. Oh, and I've got something echoing as well. There we go. Fix that problem. So, uh, yeah, it's Wednesday. I hope things are going well for you. I've got a new player app going on. So all our background music will be featured uh, in the chat if you're interested in hearing it more. So uh, let's get right down to it. It's the middle of the week for a lot of people. It's my Thursday in my schedule. Uh, make sure to hydrate. Um, so yeah. I hope uh, you are having a good week. It might be rough for you, but you're almost there. You have made it past the halfway mark to the weekend. Uh, so we're just gonna get right down to it. We're gonna give a little description of each game. So the first one we've got up is Mint Bid. It's a little tin game, looks really cool. We've got Mint Control, also a little tin game. We have Choreograph Heroes, which is something I've been dying to play. Um, I believe it's by Thunderwork Games. Yes, Thunderwork Games. Uh, it's a roll and write adventure, setting up your stuff kind of game. It looks really good. We've got, yes, Michikora 2. Uh, I loved the first game, so I had to pick this one up as soon as I saw it in store. So, yes. Uh, I have to remind Alice about this one. <laughs> and then we have The Hunger, which is the latest game from Richard, Richard Garfield. Uh, I've read up a, a little bit about it. It seems pretty interesting, so I nabbed it for the table. So we'll get down to it and see how everything looks. So I think we'll start with the big one and move on to the smaller ones afterwards, so I can leave these ones right here. I forgot to turn my overhead light off. Well, we're just going to have to continue without it. Uh, so let's just flip over to our other screen so you guys can hear and see the chat as well. So The Hunger. It's by Renegade Games. Hunt the prey with vampiric might, but return to the castle before sunrise. So one, race across the board, hunt the most precious prey, and find the eternal rose. Two, hunt the right cards to fit your strategy and build your deck. Search uh, Three, search creep, crypts for missions, but beware of bad haunts that may slow you down. Four, and make sure you're back to the castle before sunrise or get burnt to ashes. So this plays, let's see, it's ages 12 and up, plays in about 60 minutes, good for two to six players. And it's a hefty one. I thought I had fixed it, so there we go. We're just gonna fix this real quick. It's still giving a little bit of a glare on the packaging. Give me one moment as well. I'm also gonna go get the uh, overhead light. There we go. Not so much glare now. It looks a little bit better. All right. Well, I again, I hope your evening is going well and we'll get down to it. So I believe this is out in English and French already, so you can definitely head out and get it if you want it in French. Just toss that over there for now. So let's get right down to it and see what's in the box. So right off the bat we've got some rules. Looks pretty straightforward. Oh, it actually, yeah. Pretty straightforward, doesn't seem too complicated. I love the artwork on the characters. We've got a little pamphlet for other Renegade games. Put that in the box there. And then we've got the board. Ooh, that's a nice board. And there's two sides too. I don't know if there's any indication that says, so just to give you a visual of how big the board is, not folded up, you've got, it, it's quite large. Is there an indication? Six player. 
Oh, it's A and B side. So I guess there's different things depending on what scenarios you're playing. Does middle doesn't change. So there might be placements that are different. Does fit nicely inside the box though. We've got some tokens. We'll pop those out after. We've got what looks like to be some kind of player board. Oh, or maybe it's like a purchasing thing because it actually all attaches as well. Let's see. You've got character cards, it looks like. Player area. Yeah. So these guys here are the characters. Give you a little bit of a better view there. So there should be six in total. Ooh, she's really cool looking. Doesn't look like they have any specific powers or anything like that. Like it would be based around how you build your things. There you go. We'll put that back in the sleeve. Let's see here. There we go. And then we've got some tokens here. Oh, okay, so these are indicators of characters. So we've got yellow. Oh, it also has point indications as well. There should be one more in there. So you've got all the characters there. And then each of them have their own little tokens. There's also a little tracker for like the moon phase, which is probably necessary because you need to get back to the castle before sunrise. Seems like there's place also for all the tokens and things like that as well. So let's get, and everything's just falling. I need a bigger table. I'm hoping to move this setup downstairs at some point, but we'll see. So nothing got damaged, we're all good. Yeah. Put those there, not lose my headphones. Sorry about that little kerfuffle. All right, so tokens. Now we were gonna do cards next. So cards, doesn't seem like there's anything in particular different between the sets right now from just the backs. These are probably the promo cards that you get with the game because this is a first print of the game. So let's take a look. Okay, so they're all the same card. Oh, no they're not. They look the same, but they're named differently. That's really cool. So this does have that nice little rip tie that I like. So let's get up to just doing that real quick. Perfect. So we've got a whole bunch of different cards. So I'm guessing that each one, each player starts with like a starter deck and then they build from there. Again, I haven't read too much into the game. It's just, it's a Richard Garfield. I figured I would like it, but I really enjoy the artwork. So it looks like like different regional vampires or people that you can interact with. They definitely have some interesting powers as well. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna have tantrum. And then go. I think there's little villagers, and it's cute because they all have unique names too. It, they don't duplicate so far. There's very, very diverse cast of characters. 
from what we can see. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Doo -doo. Come on. So let's see, what else do we have here? So we've got some more characters here. There isn't anything in here that says do not look at cards, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> wow, I just really, really like the art. She looks deadly. She looks really deadly. Let's see. Oop, got a little bit of hair there. Hmm. Again, it, it's interesting to see how they would play out or strategy wise. Like, what would be your strategy in this? Again, we'll have to look into seeing how all the cards work out. Ooh, they're the same back, so. So this looks like more of the green guy stuff. He's got more like a old school Dracula vibe. Then we got some purple dudes. They're all animal familiars, it looks. There's a vampire pig. That is awesome. <laughs> That is just simply amazing. <laughs> All right. There's the last pack of cards for the game. Oh, this is a uh, double sealed, it looks like. I don't know, it was just the way that that particular one was set up. So we've got, these ones are different names, but all the same. So again, these might be things you can purchase or you can use. Oh, so this is one of the things we're trying to find is the eternal rose. Perfect rose, dead rose. Ooh, that's really cool looking. And then I'm not sure what these would be. Maybe these are starter ones that you start with. Uh, there. Oh, yeah, there we go. So there's characters, logos on the character at the bottom. So all the other cards you can purchase, it looks like. So, yeah, they all have different, all the same starter set. That's cool. That's all in the same location. So we're going to go right ahead and start popping out these tokens here. Now, let's see, wild vampire, discard if you hunt a human in the forest to hunt one card in the same column for free. Oh, okay, so that's what the columns are used. They're, they're set up with different scenarios. So, we'll pop all these out. It looks like yeah, there's a nice little location for them there. And it pops out really nicely too. I mean, I'm I'm always impressed with Renegade games. They have a lot going for them. Come on. And then we've got these little icons. So I'm not quite sure where we should put them. I'm gonna put them here for now. Oh, there's blood symbols on the back of them and points. Oh, these are treasures you can get, it looks like. I wonder what the umbrella does. Plus one big vamp. All right, so that's everything in that. We'll go put these over here real quick. So there looks like there's also status effects too that you can use. Now, let's see, let's read another one. The Collector, two blood, gain one blood for each bonus token you have collected. Hmm. Treasure, discard to take any bonus token on the board. Zoologist. So again, it looks like these will be placed on the board so you can grab them occasionally. Again, they pop out really nicely. There's no rips or tears so far. And they have a nice little place in the box. 
just gonna finish popping these ones out here. There we go. Very satisfying. There we go. There's some, oh, there's replacement pieces as well, so we'll keep those. nice that they have replacement parts already included just in case. Normally I would put those small things in a token bag or a Ziploc bag but I'm going to try and keep this one laying flat on its back just because it's so large so we shouldn't have any issues with that. Let's see so does everything fit nicely in the box now that we have it all popped out. Let's see here. Whoop. There we go. Oh, we did have a little bit of tearing on one, but it's from the base, not the actual punch out. Okay. There we go. Voila. Just put some of these over here. So this is completely done. So just to give you a better location of where everything is, we'll place these cards here because that's where they look like they should go. It seems like there's a token there of some kind, but I didn't see anything that would fit in that location. Uh, this seems like it would go there. larger. These will fit here. And then this will fit in there. And then we'd have the big board here. Oh, does it not fit directly inside? It might just be me. No. It does not fit. That's interesting. You would figure that they would have match the box to fit that. Oh well. And then we'll put the rule books and everything else right on top. Unless I'm being silly and not seeing it. I don't think one side is bigger than the other. Nope. It just fits that way. And then we'll add the last of the components back into the box. And that's everything. So that's the hunger, uh, the new Richfield, um, Rich, uh, Richard Garfield game. Person who uh, I believe it's created magic or one of the people that works on magic also has a bunch of other games like King of Tokyo, that kind of thing as well. So definitely look into getting a playthrough of this done fairly shortly. So let's head off to the next one. Our next large one is Dun 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 dun. Michikoru. Boom. Michikoru 2. So, Michikoru is a fun set collecting game with dice. Um, essentially, you're building up your, your locations to try and get these things and then also match certain requirements to win the game and get the final points. So, this plays two to five players, plays in about 45 minutes, and good for ages 10 and up. So, we're gonna get this going. It's an all new standalone game. I believe I either have the legacy version of the game of the original or I have the original version of the game. But we will look into that once I'm done unboxing downstairs. So, ta-da, Michikoru. That's the first layering done. So we've got a quick explanation on how things work. It's a pretty straightforward game. I really enjoy it. This is something I've played a lot with Alice. Ooh, it's got chunky dice. We've got some advertisement in the box as well. So we've got some nice chunky dice. Oh yeah. Yes. I love the colors. They're not traditional colors. Ooh, plastic monies. Not punch outs, which we could probably ooh, easily put there. 
And then we have the cards. Oh, I wonder what those are. So there might be some additional rules to the game because there looks like there's some additional things in the back. So these are different locations that you can purchase. So that's how much it costs to get. And then you'll get certain things. So take two coins from the active player, but you have to roll an eight. Uh, there's a combo card. Costs four, roll on an eight, you get it. And it's um, get four coins from the bank for each um, that symbol establishment on your turn. We, ooh, some of these are really interesting looking. So again, all the cards have different abilities, different combos. Apple Orchard, that is a go-to for me. Another combo card, oh, okay. Combo cards are ones that will activate off of these things. So each location has like this little symbol and that symbol will correspond to something else in the game. So these are landmarks. So landmarks are places that you need to, oh, there's different ones. Oh, that's cool. So they give you multiple different options at this point. That's really cool. So you've got launch pad, airport, amusement park, uh, courthouse, farmer's market, a forge, moving company, observatory, shopping mall, soda bottling plant, the stadium, temple, the exhibit hall, these are all different ones that you can get or that you can set up, which again is really cool. Like I think the original one only had like three that you could use. And then there's game flow cards. So there's charts on how to play. So that's one set of cards. Oops, I think I put some of them upside down. We can plop those right down there. I wonder if we can fit both Michikor and Michikor 2 in the same box. Oh, I didn't check to see if there was different backs of them. So there's landmark cards and then establishments and that tells you from 7 to X. That's cool. Let's open up the next pack. Hope everybody is enjoying the groovy music. I'm trying something new this week. So we've got a sushi bar, which is a take back. We've got wheat fields. Oh, oh, there's different ones. So there's wheat field and then vineyards. You've got bakeries. We've got the cafe, convenience store, flower gardens, some flower shops, business center, cornfields, and the stadium. Um, so, does it say differently on the lower ones? It does. It says the establishments are different as well. So that's really cool. We'll put the chunky boys back in their dice holder places. This, I can't wait to play with these. I love having components that are nice and chunky like the coins. And there's a lot of them too. Um, I think I'll keep them in the plastic jag just for now because I don't want them going flying anywhere. But this is a really easy game to teach. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the original was a lot of fun. The strategy for this one seems like there'll be a lot more because you have different things that you can purchase as landmarks. So I'd have to reread the rules just to see how that works. Da -da. 
There we go. Whoop. That's all of them yet. Set that back up. So we got the character flow sheets as well. There we go. That's everything back in the box. Let's get this over here. So we've got the catalogs and the rule book and the books. So that's everything inside Michikoro 2. Next up, we have Choreograph Heroes. So this plays one to 100 players, age is good for 10 and up, and plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. So this is a great game if you want to play over Skype or over Zoom or over Facebook or if you're doing a Twitch stream and you want everyone to play with you. This is definitely something you can play online with multiple people. The only component that you would really need to have is the score sheet. And I believe there's a free version of the score sheet somewhere around. So you just have to pay attention to what's being drawn for cards or what's being rolled and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get down to it and open this up. I really enjoyed the original one. Uh, I believe I have the original one downstairs and it's still not open, but I do have it somewhere. <laughs> Again, COVID with everything going on, it's been hard getting people to come play games. We're starting to lift restrictions here in Montreal. So hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll have stuff to like show you, do demos of and go on from there. So let's get down to it. This is a very tiny box. So you've got the rule books and all the information on how to play. It's not too long. It's pretty straightforward. I do enjoy the artwork for this as well. And it gives you a definition of all the cards that there are that you can draw and from there. Oh, there is an online version of the game as well on Apple and iOS. I mean, iOS and Android. So definitely check that out. There's a little category catalog of different stuff you can get from Thunderbird Games as well. Oh, they have another one that's online. I did pick up all these as well. Let's see. It looks like they've got a lot going for them right now. This is a, a newer company that I've been following, but I, I really enjoy a lot of the stuff that they've been publishing. So you've got a nice bunch of sheets to use. I believe they all have the same like information. Oh, the second side has something different. There's like some cavernous parts. I, I probably just because I don't want to lose like the sheet, I'd probably make four or five just laminated so that I could have them for like years to come. You've got a set of pencils that come with the game and then you have your cards. So let's get into it and see what we've got for cards. It's a little nice little grip tie. Yeah, there they go. I said Lego. There we go. So, you've got base stuff there. The quality of the cards are really nice too. They're nicely matted. Ooh, there's a dragon. There's zombies. There's giant troll. Gorgons. Who's this one? some characters that show up. This one definitely has more combat to it. So here you've got different land places that you can choose from and how you would add them to your map. Again, I have to reread the rules, but that's pretty interesting. And these don't have a different back to them. Ooh. And then these are, I think, win conditions. I don't know if these are hidden or if they're like selected for the start of the game, but that should be something I read up on. But there's quite a lot of those different ones that you can go through. And then spring, 
summer, fall, and winter. So that's all the cards in the game. It's not a very large game, but it's very portable. So it's definitely something you could play with multiple people. Again, it says one to a hundred, so you can even play it as a solo mode as well. So maybe we'll try that out one night when we don't have anything to do, we can try a solo mode version of this game. So again, this is uh, Choreography Heroes by Thunderwork Games. Let's get down to the next one. So the next one, we've got our two little tiny boxes. So I got um, I got a chance to talk to, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting her name right now. I'm drawing a blank on the name. But um, we got to talk to a lot of the people creating behind these things. And we also got to try a demo version of their game, like the, the one they were working on for computer. Uh, and it looked really interesting. So in this one, Mint Bid, Mint Bid is a refreshing light auction and bidding game, complete and co-op as you pick partners to bid buildings, to build buildings you both bid on. So this has uh, the rules, auction tokens, 20 mints, one die, four AI cards, and 30 location cards. Uh, you can play this in about 45 minutes plays one to six players and good for ages 13 and up. So again, a lot of one player games came out in the last couple of years just because of solitary reasons. So we're gonna open it up. You've got the rule book, which is just folds right on out. It gives you a complete all over view. Ooh. I did not mean to pull so hard. Ooh, some of, there's other parts that work too. Ah, it happens, a little bit of tape and it will fix it right up. And there's probably a PDF version online. There's a two player variant and solo mode. But that's a little concerning that it, it rips so, so easily when I just pulled it. But either way, rules are very tightly Packed. Be careful when opening. We'll make sure we don't pull too hard with the next one. So this one has all your little tokens with a tiny dice. So you got all your little bids, little dice. Oh, there's a little auction dice uh, token. Oh, some of the. The tokens too are a little paint worn. Like there's chips in the the tokens. This could have been a first. Is this a first print of the game? I am not sure. It says not suitable for ages zero to three because you know tiny wood pieces would not be good for kids. And then we've got the cards. They're very tiny. Just to I palm the cards. Now let's see, how do we open these up? There we go. Not too hard to get these out. So you've got... different player roles, I think. And then you have the actual buildings you can build. Oh, this was the AIs. That's the AI cards, and these are the buildings. So let's see, you've got windmill. You've got windmill several times. You've got wholesaler. You've got production plant. Got a bunch of those. Mines. Corporate headquarters. Some cranes. Hmm. So I wonder what, like, how many you have to win to win the game. All that information would be in the handy little manual. So everything fits really nicely back inside as well. Like, I love the concept of this game because it it literally fits in a box for like your mints. So these are all your little. Mints. You can leave them running around inside too or just put them back in the bag. I'm going to put them back in the bag just because I'm always scared that things are going to open while I'm moving them around. 
and I do not want these to go flying anywhere. <laughs> I wonder if you win the game by bidding on certain things together or if there's, what's it called? Um, there's anything else in particular in the rules. And because there's a one player variant or a solo variant, very interested in seeing how that works as well. I'm also very tempted to, to change out these mints for Altoids just to see how they would work as game pieces. So that fits nicely back in there. This fits back nicely in there and comes up all nice and good to go. And the box, I'm not too scared of it opening up. It's pretty solid. So mint works, or mint big was the yellow box. Mint control is the red box. There's also a green box, which I'm forgetting the name of right now, uh, which I was hoping to find an English version at the store, but unfortunately we only got these two in English and I was hoping to get the, all of them, but we'll keep an eye out for them. So again, uh, this one is Mint Control. is a refreshing light area control game. Compete in a competition is heating up. Keep your company in the sweet spot and get uh, don't get pushed around. So it plays in about 20 minutes, good for one to four players, ages 13 and up. So we open it up. We'll be careful with the manual this time. So the manual, there's still a little tearing in this one, but it's not as bad as the other one. There's also a little bit of like print issues, I would say. But all the information is there and you can also learn how to play. They have a nice QR code on this one as well. So that shouldn't be an issue. I believe this is one I played already that I really enjoyed. So you've got different little tokens. You even got little candies. That's super cute. And you've got different cards here. So, all right, so that's everything in the, uh, the box slash container. So let's see. Oh, okay. This might be for like the solo mode. Come on, open up. Nope, it didn't want to open for me. Come on. There we go. All right. So, for the cards here, they're, ooh. Okay, maybe they're meant to look like that. They look a little uh, rugged for rare, but that might just be how they're supposed to look. So, on this side, you have the lotto, you have the bunker, real estate office, park, producer, black market, producer, supplier, gallery, wholesaler, leadership council, city mall, hall, community pool, and supermarket. Oh, and these are the AIs again. Oh, there's even little business cards. That's super cute. That's adorable. And of course there's different information for, uh, for that stuff too. Uh, let's see. So those we can plop back into the box right away. Let's see. This one, how am I gonna open this one up? It's so thin. Let's go with this one first. I need to invest in getting some tiny scissors or a knife. I've got swords, but I don't think that would be appropriate. Come on, let go. Yeah. 
I love the, the taste of plastic in the evening. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So these ones, influence, off, savage, presence, earned. So you can earn different things with these. Just to give you a little bit of a view. Those fit nicely back in here. Hmm. How do I? It's really tightly sealed too. Hmm. I think it's just a repeat of the other ones too. Well, I will open these up when I get to them at a later date and time. It looks like they're the same as the previous ones. So everything goes back in here with the rules. It's a little tighter fit than the other one. Oh, but it all fits. Does it feel like it's going to open? Nope, doesn't feel like it's going to open. So that again is mint control. And that's everything we're unboxing this evening, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me just swing back around this way. I hope you enjoyed and you got to see some new exciting things this evening. And uh, we'll catch you guys later this week. We are doing RPG Friday, so make sure to stay tuned. And um, we're probably gonna hop over to uh, our friends' channel um, and play some video games with them. So uh, make sure to check out Beach Bum. Uh, he's one of my friends who is also streaming right now. Let me just throw up his name oh, up in the links doo, doo, doo. ah he's playing another game tonight so let me just throw up his stuff there so make sure to go follow him and see what he's doing and uh, we'll catch you guys later bye all have a good evening be good play more games <laughs>